Absolutely nothing. He had nothing to do with his release. Now consider this also, that only one of them is going to be released. Either Christ is going to be released, and then Barabbas will be taken to judgment and to execution. Or Barabbas will be released, and Christ will be taken to execution. Only one of them is going to be released. If Barabbas is released, then Jesus Christ must suffer and die. If Jesus Christ is released, then Barabbas must suffer and die. Who shall die? Who shall die? Shall the transgressor die? Shall the one who is guilty, this sinful one, Barabbas, shall he die? Or shall the one who is just, shall he die? They cannot both be released. The Scripture says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. So only one of these men is going to be released. And if the Lord Jesus Christ, if he is taken to, to death, then Barabbas will be released. If Barabbas is taken to death, then Christ will be released. One or the other. The innocent one or the guilty one. And I know that the Lord Jesus Christ, when he died, he died bearing the load of the sins of his people. He was charged. The sins of his people were made, the scripture says, were made to meet upon him. And for he who knew no sin was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. But the important fact to see is this, in this, this example, my friends, and it is given to us as an example of how the Lord Jesus Christ redeems sinners by substitution, that Barabbas has nothing to do with his redemption, absolutely nothing, and that if Christ is taken to execution, then Barabbas must be released. If Barabbas is taken to execution, then Christ must be released. And that brings us to the third point of the, of the study today, and that is the one result. Now, I've called our attention to one word, and that word is notable, notable. Pilate had before him two notable men. One is notable for his holiness, for his righteousness, for his sinlessness, and the other one was noted for his crimes, for his evil, for his wickedness. And then we have one truth, one truth, and that was substitution. If the Lord Jesus Christ substitutes himself in the place of Barabbas, then Barabbas goes free. And that brings us to this last point, one result, one result. And what is that one result, my friends? The Lord Jesus Christ, he was taken to be crucified. What about Barabbas? He was released. Now that's the way it had to be. That's the way it had to be. He was redeemed. You know, I said at the beginning of our study that redemption, the definition of redemption is the release of that which is in bondage. And I said redemption may be accomplished in one of these three ways, by power, by substitution or by price. And we happen to be looking today at redemption by substitution. But listen, if that which is in bondage is not released, it's not redemption. It might be an attempt to redeem. It might be someone doing his best, giving it his best shot to redeem. But there is no way, now listen, there is no way that you can call it redemption unless that one who was in bondage was released. And what we see here is redemption. Redemption, my friends, Barabbas was released. He was released because Christ was taken in his place. Redemption obtains the release of that which is in bondage. And we see that this redemption was accomplished by substitution. The same is true of the Lord Jesus Christ as He died 
as a substitute for His people. He redeemed His people. I don't believe the Lord Jesus Christ tried to redeem His people. I don't believe the Scriptures teach that at all. I believe that He redeemed His people. And that means He obtained the release. Everyone for whom He shed His blood, everyone for whom He substituted Himself is surely to be released. Released from the curse of the law, which is death, eternal death. Why? Because He redeemed us. He redeemed us, the Scripture says. He redeemed us from all iniquity. Now, how do we know that Barabbas was released? Because justice was satisfied. Justice was satisfied. Now, if both men had been crucified for the same offenses, that's not justice, my friends. And after the Lord Jesus Christ had died in the stead and in the place of Barabbas, then if Barabbas had not been released, that would not be justice. That would not be justice. But my friends, we know that Barabbas was released. Why? Because Christ redeemed His people. Because Christ died in the place, in the stead of this man. Once justice was satisfied, then that same justice. Now think about this. Once the Lord Jesus Christ satisfied the justice of God for His people, then that same justice, that same justice of God now calls for the release of His people. Why? Because the justice of God is satisfied. Satisfied how? In the person, in the substitution of Jesus Christ dying in their stead. Now, I'm confident that Barabbas, when he was when he heard the news, he heard the news. You're free. You're free. What do you mean I'm free? I'm, I've been condemned to die. No, no, you're free. Someone else has taken your place. Do you think Barabbas maybe would have said, well, I'm going to stay here in this cell, and I'm just going to wait till I make myself worthy? Oh, no, I don't believe that. Not for a minute. I believe that when Barabbas heard the word, you're free. You're free. What do you mean I'm free? You're free because a man by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he died. He was crucified. He was taken in your place. What do you suppose Barabbas did? Well, I believe Barabbas walked out of that jail that day, my friends, if he did not run out. And I believe for the rest of his life, he praised and thanked God for that one who died in his stead, in his place. I believe he had a love for him, don't you? Why, sure he did. And those of us who have been redeemed by the substitution of Jesus Christ and know him, we love him, and our desire is to serve and to honor him all the days of our lives.